Welcome to the 10th year anniversary celebration of the building of the Fort Kent Senior Citizen Center. Yes, it has been 10 years since the center was built. During the next few minutes, you will see how the center was first started. You will see the people that came up with the idea. You will see the people that volunteered their time to building the center and making the center a reality. The current Senior Citizen Club had its beginnings in 1978. At that time, a group of people met and with the help of attorney Robert Jalbert, got a pool for their charter. The group was to be known as the Elderly Social Action Council. Today, we now know this as the Fort Kent Senior Citizen Club. For the first few years, the club met in the cellar of the St. Louis Convent. This was a convenient place to hold meetings, but not for having large club activities. Then in 1998, the club members started talking about having their own building. The idea of building gained interest. But there are many questions that needed to be answered. Where do we build? How can we afford building? Once built, how do we support it? Finally, in early 2003, the decision was made to build the Senior Center. Land on the former Silvio Martin farm was available. The land was purchased for $30,000. The group was pleased with the decision and immediately started the building process. A building permit was then obtained from the town and construction would become a reality beginning on May 1st, 2003. A groundbreaking ceremony was organized. The community leaders were invited. Businesses were invited. And the many volunteers that would become the construction company gathered at the building site. Irvin Roy, president of the Fort Kent Senior Citizen Club introduced the dignitaries. Among them were Don Yimo, Fort Kent Town Manager, and Father Claude Jandro, resident priest of St. Louis Parish. Here we see Ray Terrio giving instructions to Father Claude. But finally Father Claude has the last word and gives the blessing to the site to the businesses, to the contractors, and to all the volunteers that would donate their time to the building. Now it is time to officially start the building process. Here we see the first shovel of dirt, which signals the start of any construction. The dream of having a Fort Kent Senior Citizen Center was now a reality. Here we see Leonard Dubois, also known as Garçon, using a bulldozer from Sherby Morris to do the groundwork for the building. Here we see Garçon's graded area where the building will be built. It is hard to imagine that by Thanksgiving Day, the building would be completed and the dream of having the Senior Citizen Club have its own center be a reality. The first part of the construction is to make a footing for the foundation. If the building is to last a long time, the most important part is the foundation. The contractor for the foundation was Rocky Bard. Here we see Rocky putting up the foundation, while Clarence Levac looks on. 
The person that directed the construction of the center was Ray Terrio. Here we see Ray showing the process of the floor to Pat and Norman Zion. The pipes that you see sticking up from the floor are what are needed for the water and sewer systems. Now it is time to drill a well. With all the activities and functions that are being planned for the center, a good supply of water is needed. One of the biggest decisions for the building was what kind of heating system should be installed. Finally, the decision was made to install in-floor heat. The two Fort Kent experts for the installation were John Floyd and Gary Harvey. Both John and Gary were hired to install the thousands of feet of tubing in the six inch concrete floor that would heat the center. Here we see the tubing. Once it is all connected, the tubing will be covered with concrete and will become part of the, of the floor. This is what controls the in-floor heating system. All the thousands of feet of tubing are connected here. Later, other gauges will be installed to monitor the heat. Because the concrete floor was so big, the cement had to be poured in two sections. Here on the right, we can see the cement has been installed. The left side will be done on another day. Two days later, the other half of the concrete is poured. The floor is now complete. It is time to bring in the materials and start building the center. The first pieces to arrive were the roof trusses. This is what supports the roof. This is the second most important part of a building, that is, after a solid foundation. Now is the time to start putting the walls together. Here we see Ray Terrio, George Karen, and Albiri Nado putting together what would become the first wall of the center. George Karen, the one in the middle, was one of the contractors that charged only a minimal amount for doing the work on the center. He would work on the building on his own time, as well as provide a lot of the construction equipment. But there was also a core of people that worked every day on the center. Here we see Norman Daigle, better known as Blackie, Albiri Nadeau, Ray Terrio, Paul Ryu, and Irvin Roy. You must also remember that Don Pelsey was also present, but busy with his camera. It is thanks to Don that we have these wonderful pictures as part of this presentation. Here we see Ray Terrio, the construction engineer, giving orders to Blackie Daigle to get to work. Here we see Blackie telling Ray that he is working. All the men worked hard on the building and would develop lasting friendships. Each day, the men worked hard together. Please remember that these men were not spring chickens. They were mostly retired old roosters. Here we see them posing in front of their first wall, which notably is still standing today. The four walls are now standing. Work has started on the roof. 
George Karen's cranes, are used to lift the heavy roof trusses onto the building. The building needed lots of electrical power. No, Clarence Levac is not digging for fishing worms, but is laying an electrical cable that would supply the power from the road to the building. No, Irvin Roy is not checking if Clarence has found worms. But note that Irvin is in his favorite position, that is, hands on his hips and giving orders. This is Phil Corvo with his excavator, putting in the culvert to the center's driveway. As you can see, it takes a lot of heavy equipment, as well as good people, to put up a building. Back at the center, the roof trusses continue to be installed. The building is taking shape. The heavy trusses are lifted in the air using George Karen's crane. Here we see Gary Peltzi and his son Kevin guiding the trusses into place. But it is not only the men that worked on the building. Every day, some dedicated women would bring snacks and lunch to the work site. Here we have Cora Karen and Norma Corvo with today's snacks. The work crew really appreciated their hard work. Of course, Cora always has to have the last word. Here, she is telling George Karen to get back to work. Norma and Jimmy Corvo can't believe what Cora is saying. Now, we can see the inside of the building taking shape. This is looking at what will become the kitchen area. Outside, the roof continues. The last sheet of plywood are being put on before the roofing actually starts. Here is George Karen waving to Irvin Roy to come up to the roof. Ha <laughs> ha! That will never happen. There is a lot of different work that is being done at the same time. Here we see the canopy on the front side of the building being put together. And finally, the first window to the building is installed. The construction is all coming together. The Fort Kent Senior Citizen Center is fast becoming a reality. At the back of the building, Ray Terrio is working on the carport over the entry door in the back of the building. This will provide shelter from the rain and snow for people entering the center. The carport is supported with giant metal I-beams. Here, Irvin Roy, in his favorite work position, supervises George Karen. Note there is no sweat on Irvin's brow. Here is Irvin again, this time joined by Clarence Levac. Both are supervising Edward Thibault. Notice that Ray Terrio, who is operating the crane, does not pay attention to Irvin nor Clarence. Now it is time to put on the roofing. Here we see Bertier Boutin, better known as T-Bert, bringing up the roofing. This is very heavy and hard work. Putting up roofing on a hot summer day is difficult work. Again we see Irvin in his favorite work position 
at the Inspect Tebert's roofing work. Now the roofing is installed and the carport almost finished. Notice the blue sky. The construction of the center was blessed by good times, good friendships, and good weather. The building is really taking shape. Having the first meal in the center at Thanksgiving is being planned. The construction is right on schedule. The building is being constructed with quality products that will last a long time. One example is the Simplex cement siding, which is designed to last 100 years. Nothing is also being spared, even for the electrical connections. A good quality electrical junction box was installed by Roger Sociate. Installing lots of insulation is also done. This makes it easier to heat the building in winter. Originally, the building committee thought it would cost $3,000 per year to heat the building. However, with the in-floor heat and the piles of insulation used in the building, the first year's cost of heating the center was only $1,000. It's break time again. Where is Cora with the snacks? Notice again that Irvin has no sweat on his brow and his white t-shirt is spotless. The area, what will become the men and women's bathrooms, the utility room and center's main office are in the picture. I hope that they put up walls in the bathrooms to ensure privacy. This area is what will become the kitchen and pantry areas. Many special meals as well as daily senior citizens lunches will be prepared here. No, this is not break time again. This is a group of the construction workers that gather to admire all the work that has been done on the building so far. The group is very proud of their accomplishments. And proud they should be. This is fast becoming a beautiful building. During the construction, there were many visitors to the building. Many were curious, but all were showing support for the project. Here we see Pat Zion, James Albert, and Rita Taggart talking with Ray Terrio and George Karen. Work and planning for the building went on seven days a week. This is Alberinado on a Sunday morning ride, having a look at the building and thinking what had to be done the next day. The canopy on the front of the building is done. The building is really taking shape. What a beautiful addition the center will be to the town of Fort Kent. If you think this is a puzzle, well, it is. These are the controls to the building's heating system. It takes a real specialist to understand this puzzle. This is Gary Harvey, the specialist, who along with John Plourd had set up the center's efficient heating system. With the work inside of the building coming along very well, outside, it was time to finish the landscaping and put in the parking lots. Here you see the groundwork that will become the back 
parking area. Clarence Levac is busy raking the slope around the building. Back on the inside of the building, the sheetrock is being put up and the joints taped. The insulation on the ceiling is strapped in preparation for the drop ceiling. For all those who are not familiar with all these carpenters' terms, it means that the inside of the building is almost ready for painting. This is inside the kitchen area. The stove has not been delivered, but the cabinets and sinks are soon to be. The first of the kitchen cabinets arrive. Everyone is pleased, since this is the finishing touches in the kitchen. The stove also arrives. This is a complicated unit since it includes a ventilation system as well as a fire suppression system. The kitchen area is almost complete. The stove is installed and the cabinets and sink are in place. Ray Terrio and Putty Midiru pose for the camera as they put up the kitchen's serving counter. Blackie Daigle, on the other hand, sees the tall cabinets and decides to build a wooden step stool to reach the top shelves. George Picard decides to give Blackie a hand. George is very nervous about Blackie's carpentry skills. George decides that it is safer to paint baseboards than being around Blackie and his stool. The fixtures in the women's bathrooms are being installed. There is, however, some question about privacy. The fixtures are also being installed in the men's bathroom. Although there is less concern for privacy, some are nervous about having such open accommodations. Finally, the privacy doors in the bathrooms are installed. Everyone is very pleased. All the electrical wiring construction is Rogers Sosia's responsibility. Here he is connecting all the circuits that will provide lighting to the center. Visitors continue to come in to see the building. People are so proud. Here we see Maris and Joella Parody looking at the wonderful work that is being done in the center. Much of the major construction work has now been done. It is time to do the finish work. Here we see Fern Charette and Blackie Dale working on the door trim. George Picard is checking the insulation in the ceiling. He made sure that the insulation was well put in to make the center as efficient as possible to heat. Orin Dangle is putting together the pillars that will be used for the outside carport entrance. This is another part of the center's finish work. Don Peltier is working as an apprentice under Orin and is also working on the pillars. Between both of them, they should be able to have the pillars in place by the fast approaching Thanksgiving meal. But all this hard work is tiring for senior workers. They often need breaks and naps. Here, Fern Charette is trying to get the workers back to work. With the center almost complete, it is time to move the tables, chairs, and everything else 
from the St. Louis Convent cellar, meeting room, to the new center. Moving all the stuff from the convent required a crew of volunteers. As always, people responded. In no time, the convent meeting room was emptied. Now to unpack all the stuff and get the center ready for the first meal, which is scheduled in just 10 days. Much of the kitchen equipment came from Christy Plourd. At the time, she was in the process of closing her catering business and offered the equipment to the center. The kitchen is now ready, just in time for the very first meal. The meal is not only to show off the newly completed center to the entire membership, but it is to say thank you for all the support given by the membership for the building construction. The moment has arrived. The first meal in the new Fort Kent Senior Center. People arrive by the hundreds to admire their new building and to enjoy a Thanksgiving meal. All the tables are full and the waiting line is out the door. The meal and the center are success. The center is a reminder of what can be accomplished when a group of senior citizens work together. This is a photo of the original building committee. These are the people that put in countless hours during the summer of 2003 to make the center a reality. These people were also supported by many others who brought in snacks, foods, and refreshment to the construction workers. This is a photo of the officers that were in charge of the Senior Citizen Club during the construction. Their leadership was critical during the construction. This is a photo of the club's board of directors during the construction. These people would continue to guide the club and making it the success that it is today. Today, in 2013, this is the current board directors. These people continue to build on the foundation which began in 1978 at the time known as the Elderly Social Action Council, although today we know it as the Fort Kent Senior Citizen Club. The Fort Kent Senior Citizen Center was a dream in 1995 by a group of dedicated people and then became a reality. The Board of Directors would now like to say thank you to those that created the idea of the Senior Citizen Center. Thank you to those volunteers who built the center. Thank you to the businesses who donated materials and time to the center. Thank you to all the people who supported and continued to support the center over the years but also a special thank you to all of you for making the Fort Kent Senior Citizen Center a success. Thank you.